You want to see it? Oh, it's a top. I wonder what it was. How do you call it? Top. Yeah. Top. Spinning top. Spinning top. Spinning top. And this is the spinning topic. Topic comes from top? Yeah. No, no, but it's an interesting pun. Hmm? No, but it's an interesting pun. Hmm. See? Perfect. I spend hours like that. I spend hours and I spin hours. I spin hours. <laughs> <laughs> I try to improve my English. Your English is impeccable. Oh, no, 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 no. Terrible. I have a big problem. Big trouble. I tell you. Because the things, you know, I have to say, they're very difficult. And I can't find the right words. And oh, it's a big pain. Ah, so I won't keep that here, right? You know what I mean then? Better not. Can you zoom in a little bit to see to see me without glasses? Yeah, zoom, zoom in. Zoom in, zoom, make, make a... Mm. I just changed base today and it doesn't nice feel, it doesn't feel, you know, the right thing for me. Yes. Looks very distinguished. Very distinguished. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Oh. Okay, George. Let's <laughs> go. Lights action. Yeah. When you're ready, Mr. When, yes. Close-ups close after lunch. No, you remember the joke no, with all me. the cameras that yeah. no, no camera, this explosion, uh, all the cameras are off. Oh, oh. And this one, the yeah. last hope. <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs> well, there's, there's a that was with Demil, no? Yeah, it was Demil. There's a wonderful story, though. <laughs> there's, a, there's a wonderful story. Um, uh, <laughs> <coughs> Richard Burton tells about, we were talking about Cleopatra yesterday, yeah. and um, it was the entrance of Cleopatra and where she first sees Mark Antony or Mark Antony. Oh, in Rome? Yeah, in Rome. And she comes on on an elephant. And at first Elizabeth had to be convinced that it was completely safe to be on top of that elephant. So she's strapped onto the elephant, you can't see it. So there's no way she can fall off. I mean, the elephant. Only the elephant can no, fall. Only the elephant can fall off, but she could not possibly fall off. And they, they rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed this scene the day after, without her, of course, day after get the elephants to come on. And of course, there are lots of dancing girls who are kind of doing this. And they had to have zebras. Well, there weren't any zebras that were tame, so they had horses which they had to paint. To paint zebras, yeah, on, so with pajamas. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, this has gone on for day after day after day. Finally, they're absolutely ready. Finally, Elizabeth is persuaded to get up onto the elephant. So she's now on the elephant, and this, the horses have been... And it's boiling hot because it's in Rome. Horses have been painted black and white, and the paint is already starting to run, so they're in panic, you know. You're going to have stripy, mm -hmm. really stripy horse zebras and so on. And they've got cameras absolutely everywhere because they realise they probably could only do this once, you see. So now everything is ready. And Mankiewicz is up on a very high tower. Richard Burton is standing there looking imperious. Elizabeth comes on, shaking with fear on top of this elephant, but trying to smile at the same time. And of course, she's got an enormous head. You know, it's an enormous head. Never to, ever to get ready, so it's just mad. Which actually, the head is a little bit tilted. It's not, <laughs> I know. I remember the scene, yeah. So anyway, so they, now that it's, everything is going. Roll up, you see, and you've got ten cameras everywhere, every conceivable angle to do everything, you see. And Mankiewicz is up the top just trying to watch it and crap cast a thousand you know, zebras paints running and everything and suddenly he leans forward according to Richard Burton it was going perfectly as far as Richard Burton could see and he heard this enormous voice saying cut cut so they have to stop the elephant does this and then there's this swaying like this and why what happened in the crowd for the four days they'd rehearsed it there was a guy selling ice creams and he didn't realize it was a take no. So you see in the master shot a guy in the background selling ice creams. <laughs> so it, it took another four days to persuade Elizabeth to get back up on oh, the shit. elephant. shit. Because they couldn't turn the elephant around. Um, what happened to the guy? 
uh, I think he probably was put into the ice cream mix. <laughs> <laughs> because at the time they didn't have computers, no, so everything was real. Yes, I was thinking to, ho to go for a pee or to continue and maybe cut and have a pee. Up to you. No, let's start and then okay. we have a pee. Right. Pee time. Have a, have a pee break. Tea break. Tea break, as opposed to a tea break. Yes, right. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, let's go from the uh, ridiculous to the sublime and go back to what we were talking about at lunchtime. I mean, um, oh, you, you want to do that? Well, I mean, we, we began to talk about it. It's a very, very interesting subject. I so, mean, what, what do you want me to say? Well, I don't want you to say anything, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, what it's, am I? Is, what what well, am I doing here? It's it's, no. it's it's very hard to make films about people. Yes, it is. So you question why you're doing it? Why, no, why I mean, I question when I'm doing it uh, according to what you know what I think I'm thinking about all those things. But by saying that, I mean it's it's, it's really, really more difficult and more ridiculous because, in one hand, uh, I don't like doing that, and the other hand, I'm doing it. So. It's a little bit uh, contra contradictory, isn't it? And uh, of course, you know that for nine years <laughs> we've been discussing <laughs> since we've met, and uh, the answer was not, you know, positive, right? Well, it was neither one thing. Not nothing, nothing against you. It's just, just uh, you know. So I don't know. Uh, I think this is interesting. Talk, talking about myself is not easy. Talking about other things, uh, it's uh, easier, but then you have to go into heavy stuff, you know, serious stuff and all that. And uh, Because otherwise, you know, we do a, a pleasant blah blah without interest. And uh, you see, I don't want to, uh, I, I don't like to, to criticize anybody, uh, but uh, I won't accept you know, to um, to be thrown at me all this garbage, all this trash, right? Uh, deliberately, and I'd, I can't accept that. I mean, I can't say not to me, to you, to everybody. I mean, I'm not judging, but I, I don't accept taking as well everything that's going on around, which is not very pleasant. I mean, we're talking about real stuff, not not talking about light. Uh, conversation, you know. So, and talking about God, the real stuff, then you become boring or negative, because people they don't want to hear things like this. So, I was thinking that if I'm doing this to promote myself, then it's useless, because I don't want to promote anything. If you want to, to do that because I have to say a few things, then those things are not so pleasant. So, As we said before, is to be or not to be. <laughs> this is the question, you know. It's the is to say or not to say things. In that sense, but anyway, maybe we shouldn't get into that. It's just I have to put to make this remark because I just felt it like that. Yeah. That's it. Let's come back to it. Uh, one thing we began to talk about last night, just as just as I was going. Yeah. We we started to talk about. Um, in relation to the the drums and the, the reeds that I saw, yeah. Um, the where's the microphone? Oh, <laughs> who's that? There's another yeah. one over there. Uh, about um, yeah. I said, if you think of Greek folk music, you think of bazookies. Uh, and one of the remarkable things about many of the things of yours that I've heard and seen is this is a different, not folk music, but a different tradition of almost ancient Greek music, if you see what I mean. And yeah. How has this image come about that Greek folk music is just bazookies? Well, here we are again. We, we, I have to talk for things that maybe I shouldn't, because I can't fight this uh, unfortunate situation that happens, you know, and all this uh, uh, epidemical uh, bazooki, you know, uh, era. And and you can't go against, you know, uh, 
uh, let's say, 10 million people that, you know, they, they listen to the bouzouki, you know, all day, today. You know. But, uh, and it's better not, not to, to go through it, because it won't be a very pleasant uh, discussion. But anyway, uh, I don't believe that, uh, you know, whatever happens, this is, uh, this music, it's uh, the uh, ethnic music of Greece. Definitely, it's one areas and periods music. But uh, maybe became a little bit uh, more, uh, not important, but more used than, than it should be. There are other things very, very important, which uh, gradually they don't get the same treatment and they die and, and you know, they, they get transformed. I mean, some extraordinary riches in different areas of Greece. Ethnic music, incredible ethnic music, very ancient, much older than the current uh, popular music. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's better for me not, not to go deeper to that, hoping that uh, there are some uh, other occasions, maybe later, that, you know, the music will be developed in a different way than the one, the one that is happening today. Okay, but I mean, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, music that I hear, when I, yeah. I hear your music, I hear some, something else um, which tells me that it's of Greece. Yeah. Mythodeus, perfect example. Yeah. Um, doesn't sound like bazooki music. I mean, I'm, I'm caricaturing bazooki music. Oh, yeah. Now, I wondered where that interest came from and, and how you developed it. I mean, even the bazooki music, the one that you, you mentioned, and you know even the name, which comes from, from an instrument, is because it was, it was promoted to you. But nothing else has been promoted to you. It's never, nothing else has been promoted out of Greece except that. And that happened, you know, since the 50s, from the Never Sunday which Greece, you know, had a big success in Cannes. Then, then all the, let's say, this kind of image, were semi-touristic, semi-whatever, semi anyway, starts to build and then Greece became, you know, known, known like this. It was a kind, in a, like a mark. So that's why you know and that's why we talk about it. Uh, and, but there are other things, uh, very, very important, a very noble, which they never had the same chance. And they don't, st still today, they don't have the same chance. I mean, when I, when I touch the area of, of ethnic music and ancient music, I, re I will go straight to the oldest memory, which I can reach. And, that's, and I'm very, very, very concerned about, not only about my country, but about every country. And um, to, to preserve the roots and, and this ethnic richness, because it's very, very important uh, for each country. And uh, I remember in Paris, uh, very early 70s, I've been trying to convince the record companies um, to invest and to, to be interested in, in that type of that area of music, the, 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 the ethnic, what we call ethnic today. That was early 70s, maybe 71, 72, something like that. And of course nobody was interested, especially, you know, in, in, in uh, talking about ethnic music in France because of the colonies, like you have in England, they have a, they have a lot of, had a lot of companies, uh, colonies in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, they had uh, access to the African folklore, which is uh, superb, very, very rich and extraordinary, great quality. And I've met a lot of African people, which actually they, they sang, you know, in an extraordinary way, something that became very, very uh, known and, uh, and create big hits during the, you know, the late 80s to the 90s. But all this, all this period, nothing. Because nobody was interested in ethnic music 
I remember uh, one of the of the things that I like when I work with Ridley in, uh, in Blade Runner is because Ridley uh, it wasn't against to to to, to use ethnic uh, perfume, ethnic uh, you know sound to Blade Runner, and I was quite quite very very happy, which I did, but nothing happened again. <laughs> until you know, until late eighties, which actually the ethnic thing started, and now sometimes the ethnic the ethnic became also sometimes not serious because you know whatever happens every time you know becomes a little bit uh, he loses his uh, strength and uh, they overdo it and you know some some things happen without without the, the, the proper quality. But uh, to go back to the the, the first things we said, I believe. That the strongest thing for each its countries is the roots and and the ethnic, the ethnic memory, the ancient. I do it by instinct. I never sat down and say what is the most important to do to do this or to do that. Came naturally to me, and I, when I perform and when I when I do those kind of things, the reaction of of the, the people is extraordinary, because. It's it, it hits, you know, to some some very hidden uh, places in in their souls, maybe, and you have this extraordinary reaction. I mean, for I'm talking, maybe you know, I gave an example for my country, but I mean, every country is exactly the same thing, and they should treasure that instead of copying, you know, the 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 current fashion, and this current fashion. Uh, also carries a lot of unnecessary uh, between brackets goods. I mean, it it comes back down. It comes again to the subject we talked about a lot yesterday, and very interestingly about uh, commercial. Commercialization is too simple. Um, but this, every tourist that gets on a plane at mm. the airport here, they think yeah. Greek music. They think bazooki. All right. For, for reasons that we. Yeah, for reasons accordion and. Yeah. Uh, uh, Scotland, the pipes, and you yes. know, okay, yeah, I know, I know. But that, in, in a, what you're saying is, if I understand it correctly, is in a in a very in real sense that does that does damage to the ancient roots, if you like. For, for some reason, they, they, don't, they don't. To me, they don't match. And hearing the music that's happening here in Greece, and looking looking. Through the, the through the whole, I mean, the whole civilization, they, they don't match this kind of things. I don't know. But again, I, you know, I'm trying not to say things instead of saying things, and uh, then we go in the middle way again. Because if I go all the way, maybe I shouldn't. Because you know, uh, then we open. Really, the Pandora's box. Well, and maybe we shouldn't. Peek eh? inside the lid if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a reason because why? Because things happen. Things that don't happen because they happen. They happen because it's a reason. Sometimes because they've been prepared years ago, or because for for many natural reasons. And um, I mean, even when I say natural reasons, not from nature, from reasons that uh, it's like a chain, one comes after the other. And um, and I don't know if that subject anyway interests anybody to talk about why in Greece that happens today, and what in Spain or what in France. Or, I mean, maybe there's subjects which maybe we have to. To make a special talk about the issue, and then start to analyze thoroughly each <laughs> every point, you know, to be to be understood. Because like this, again, I will I will sound like I'm criticizing things. I'm not. I'm just just analyzing. It doesn't sound like criticism. Well, I think you worry uh, about that too much. It, does, it really doesn't sound like criticism. But again, I go back to, to um, my main point, which is that I think when you listen to your music, take the, take the march 
um, uh, in the world game thing that I want to use. I mean, that is an unmistakable sound of Greece, but it doesn't sound like Mazukis. It does sound like you, but it also sounds like something from a far distant memory, if you see what I mean, mm -hmm. which has been brought to life. And I think that achievement, which is yours, uh, is something which should be celebrated. As simple as that. I don't know. Well, I mean, that, that's my, uh, my feeling about it. I'm, I will, just, I'm I will. just curious to know, uh, we've got that wonderful bit of film now that you've yeah. provided if you, with the drums, with the, the reeds. Yeah. Now, that's a conscious attempt to do something, if you see what I mean. And I'm just curious how you got to that point. Well, I, I think I got to that point by memory because I always, always said the few times that I, I, I spoke out that you know, memory is a very important thing and we learn more by memory than by, by learning if we go to school because we learn, we think that we learn, but only we remember what, what we know already. That's a very, very important thing. You see, you think that you learn that. I mean, yes, we can learn some details, but the important things we know. The only thing is that we don't remember those things because the system doesn't allow us to remember anything of those kind of things. If you remember, you're going to find out that you know more than you think you know. And uh, through maybe this memory uh, path, I felt the way the way I felt, and um, um, how can I put it? Uh, Also, you know, as I said before, the moment that happens, it's like like everybody agrees that something is moving there, and it's 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 normal because it's ancient, and it's extremely important. Not because it's ancient, because the more ancient something uh, is, the more yours is. Mm -hmm. What is ours? Ours is something that lasts for forever. I mean, forever, but. You know, the ever in this case, when the moment is now, is the ever is the past, where we come from. And that's very, very important. Something that uh, deliberately today uh, the system tried to, to cut us off. So that, that's extremely important. Very, very important. But anyway, you know, what else I can say? <laughs> Let's change tack and, and, and keep that in the memory bank. In the memory bank, no, yes. No. Okay. Um, can I be very personal and ask you about your father? Seems to me, from what I know, from little you've told me, and what I've read. My father? Yeah. Well, then we're going to area the personal area now that I don't think interests anybody. <laughs> well, simple. Your um, father was. You tell me. Well, I, I, the only thing I can say about my parents is that they, they I had the, 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 you know, the chance to have wonderful parents. People that, you know, very, very noble and very, very honest and uh, very nice people. And, uh, you know, both they liked very much the arts. My father was not an artist, but my father loved, you know, the music and we used to go to concerts and things like that together. My mother, she, she was playing the piano. That's why, you know, I found the piano, this, this, uh, you know, piano at home. And then she was, she was a mezzo-soprano, which I never, she never, of course, became a professional because at the time it was not seen very well to, to, to be an artist, you know, this society rules, right? And, um, that's it, and they never, they never, never uh, stop me by doing things that I would like to do. Partly because they've been very, very sensitive, and partly because I started so early, and I never gave them a chance for something else. So that was obvious when they see, you know, a child, they, you know, just start to play its own compositions at the age of three to four. I can't remember. It was, you know, it was very difficult to say to this child, "Don't do that." And also because partly they, you know, they've been music lovers and art lovers and, and all that. I think this is, 
what I have to say, which is the, the essence of my parents. And I'm very glad and grateful to have to have parents like this. Of course, I don't have them anymore. But, you know... But it's interesting that your father wasn't a musician. No, he was not a musician. But, you know, he was really very, very front to the, you know, to music and all that. What did he do? Uh, it was a uh, uh, kind of, uh, hmm. I don't know the name actually, how to say it in English. Um, uh, we do a playback to this, where we find the name. <laughs> when do you remember the name? Well, I remember the, you know, the title, I don't know, uh, yeah. Yeah. And your brother, who we see in the, in the film. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, what, I mean, I knew that you had a brother, but he's, he's dealing with the fabrics, isn't he? In the, in the no, no, my, my, my brother also, it's a very artistic. It's, um, he, he used to, actually, he used to, he went to the music school, he used to play the piano, and is good, on, you know, with uh, drawing and uh, with... Um, he did a lot of uh, interior decoration and things. I mean, whatever he does is, is very, very artistic and very sensitive. And he's been into music business as well. You never started a group, the two of you? No, we, <laughs> uh, we, we played a little bit together, just, you know, sometimes. He used to play a little bit the percussions. <coughs> but, but no, no. Every bit of film you showed us yesterday that included you, especially, infamously, the uh, press conference, uh, the Liverpool press conference. Oh, yes. You looked very unhappy and very uncomfortable, I think is the, is the word. Well, I'm always uncomfortable when I have, you know, I'm in front of a camera and I have to say things like I am now. I don't think I'm not. But especially at that time, I was very unhappy because I had a lot of problems. I mean, incredible. But again, it's something that I don't want to talk about because uh, it's very unpleasant. I, I've been through hell. I almost, you know, it almost never. You know, we reached not to, to, you know, to, to perform. It was really, I, I was really um, put against, uh, you know, incredible. Uh, I can explain. Uh, Pressure. Yes, underground as well, a lot. A lot of things, you know, sabotage, things like that. Some people didn't want to happen this thing. But anyway, it's very unpleasant to talk about that. I mean, the the, the thing is that Methodia happened and it was a great success. And and uh, you know, I don't want to say any more. You have now the you know the, yes, yes, the no, videotape. I wasn't wanting to pry into, into those yeah. problems, but it was just it's. I was trying to get you back to this business of, of cameras and talking about yourself and all of that stuff. Yeah, which is obviously. Um, painful for you, in some ways. Yes, it is painful. It is painful because... I think yesterday we mentioned about live performances and things like that. And the most difficult, talking about the live performance, is that the two sides, they have the same goal, the same motivation. It doesn't happen. Because my goal and motivation very rarely agrees with the goal and motivation of the other side, which organized the concert. And this, these two things, the clash. Because I don't think uh, commercial. I think, I think just in a completely different terms. And the squeeze in a different terms for other, you know, for maybe unnecessary reasons which I'm not concerned. So these two things, they're about not to, to happen. It's not a question of um, being difficult or being, you know, complicated and all that. It's very, very simple. I think that uh, whatever happens, the two sides, they have to, to have the same direction. And this doesn't happen. You know very well that it doesn't happen in this business. Except, of course, if you have people that they, they are so egocentric and they have so much need to be promoted, and need to be shown, and need to be to move their asses on stage, you know, and to to demand success and demand, you know, to impose things, 
in a very, very aggressive way, then in this case, they go really uh, very well with the, the, the other side and, you know, they do whatever they do. I don't want to mention names again, but that's not what it means. <laughs> then both, both the, the, the accomplished, as we say, yeah. yeah. But it, I mean, I yeah. think you also have to face the fact that I mean, it, 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 the, the music should speak for itself. The painting should speak for themselves. Um, it's it's impertinent to quiz someone and say, "What does that piece of music mean?" or "What does that painting mean?" Because if you knew, you'd write it down in words rather than do it. If you see, what I don't mean. think I would have done if if I knew. I don't think I would have been able to do it. How do I know? I mean, even knowing, we say knowing. Ah, you say, I know this. What do we mean when we say, I know this? We never, th it's, it's, we, we start thinking. Uh, in which way you know what you say that you know? <laughs> and I don't want to go deeper to that, but I mean, again, it's, it's something that, and very, very easy we say, we know, but we don't know. Or maybe, what we know, we don't think that we know. It is, it is, it's very complicated. And I'm not trying to be complicated, but through the years, many, many simple things, they become very complicated. Because we don't mean what we're saying. And we don't say what we mean. And that, that creates a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. I mean, we think that uh, a lot of things are necessary, which are totally unnecessary. We spend fortunes on necessary things. I remember one thing of you know Socrates, which which uh, somebody saw Socrates in the marketplace. He says, "What are you doing here?" I say, "You can't imagine how happy I am to see what I don't need." <laughs> you know. Right. Okay. You, you see. You see what I mean. But I mean, even you you don't have to go as far as that. But I mean, you know. 80% of the things that we, we've been uh, asked uh, to, to buy every day, uh, those things are, un are unnecessary. And if we don't buy, we feel insecure because we don't have... You see, it's crazy to feel insecure because you don't have the unnecessary. <laughs> That's crazy, you think. Once you possess the unnecessary, then you feel secure with unnecessary things. Schizophrenia, isn't it? I mean, that, that sometimes I do it myself, you know, it's... it's, it's <laughs> I'm not, again, I'm not criticizing anything. I just, you know... Anyway. I mean, it's, what's fascinating, both yesterday and today, is to actually talk about music in... in uh, um, but you, you started it off yesterday, I was going to say, talking about music in a philosophical way. Mm -hmm. Um, but you quite rightly said, you know, that, that uh, I'm caricaturing it now, you said it much more eloquently, that, but there is a music about us, there's a music about our being, there's a music about our souls, as it were. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to find a way to communicate that. Um, but it is very unusual to talk about music in purely philosophical terms. It I, mean, is, I think it's important. I'm, I'm yeah, it is, it is unusual because when you have so many centuries that the music became what, what it became for the right or the wrong reasons. Uh, the music became what it became because it's, the music has been treated like that. And it's been treated because the, um, the human beings, through the years, they, uh, they've been brought up in, a, in, a, in that way. Uh, at least I'm talking about the Western civilization, if you want. You know, there are other countries that they still keep a different pro approach to music, like India, for example, that they play different music, you know, in the morning, you know, different in the evening, different in the night, uh, which, and, and for us that, that it's, um, you know, it sounds quite crazy, I mean, quite unusual. But if... Uh, Deeper we go into the music and, 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 the, and this, the whole mechanism and how it works, we're going to find out that uh, uh, it's something extremely important and quite different from the one that we think it is. 
do we want it or not, we are surrounded and covered by music. We are made by music. Now, what we do with music, it's, it's the, the, the mirror of our present state. The way that we treat in music, uh, if we know how to, to, to read that, immediately we know the state of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the human being the moment that, that, you know, that this event happens. For example, today we have this music, we put the music down, we don't have to see the people. And by reading this, analyzing this, we know in what situation these people are. Uh, the, the music, it's, it's just, you know, a code. Not a code by, by itself, but it's another code, the, the, the moment that the people manufacture music. Because we manufacture music as well. It's not only we made by music, but we manufacture. But we manufacture music in a different way. And this different way, by analyzing it, we can see the state of, of, of each, you know, period, human beings, you know, civilization and all that. But that's a different, uh, uh, different approach and it needs um, a lot of maybe seminaries to, you know, well, we're not to explain. Well, we're not doing too bad. Yeah. So, I mean, really what you're saying is that if you want to know about a people at a particular time or a civilization at a particular time... Go to music, go to, to their music. music. Yeah, and so... The, the, the corollary of that is that if you looked around at what, well, I'm sorry to keep going back to the bazookis, if you, as it were, heard the bazookis, that tells you a lot about Greek society, which is not anciently truthful, if I yeah. can put it this way. Well, uh, let's, put it, I mean? yeah, let's put it that way. It's not up to me to criticize that, but history in the future will, will analyze by that music what state would, was Greece today or England today, or Spain today, or France today, or maybe 50, or 100 years ago, or maybe 500 years ago. And then maybe you can predict in the future what's going to happen, which sometimes today's, today's a little bit difficult to predict because of this uniformity that happens. Because it doesn't allow each country to develop, to develop itself. It's it, the, all the influences and the pressures which change the whole, the whole situation. But then it's not a very pretty picture. Pretty picture? No, I don't think so. No, it's not. It's not because it's, it's false, it's manufactured. That's the problem, it's the manufactured thing. And what we do is like, it's like against the, the human itself. Because the, the primary reason is money. How to make money. How to impress and how to make money. Money, money, money. And the, answer, the, the question is, yes, but how, what are we going to do with that money? Maybe the answer is, maybe we can't, we need. But to monopolize the whole humanity and to put it at, at the, the, the money um, boot, I think this is something that destroys more than anything else. It's not, it's not me to say that, you see around you what's happening. The motivation, even even young people, 15 years old, the only thing they want is money. Be famous and money. Now, how to get money, that's another thing. How to be famous is another thing. What do you have to do in order to get that? That's the big thing. True or not? People that they have properties and they, uh, they, <coughs> they get, you know, the... The landlord. Landlord, yes, landlord. He was a la oh, I thought he was a landlord. Landlord, yes, that's... Okay. Well, yeah, I can go back and say that. Okay, well, well, let, me, let me come back to it when, when we go, because this is important, what we're saying. Now, we, we, this is, is now really coming back to what we were talking about last time, because the, the thing that is absolutely despicable, and I can be critical even if you don't want to be, but mm. the thing that is absolutely despicable and unforgivable about present society is the, the cult of the personality, the desire to be famous. It's not famous for 15 minutes. I mean, look at these ridiculous um, uh, uh, reality shows on television, you know, Big Brother and all that. There's these, I'm sure they're terribly nice people, but they're put in a situation that's completely artificial. They do it in order to become famous. 
Now, I mean, how worth it? They had no... They're, they're only famous for being famous. Paris Hilton, take an obvious example. Okay, I mean, but that's the, yeah. that is... Uh, that, that is a despicable in my book, but also, I mean, that's the end of any real value about the human personality, it seems to me. But this is the point, the end of the, the, the real value. And we have to do, you have to achieve the end of the real value. Because then we can rule in a, in a much easier way. The thing is that... Sorry, what, what do you mean by that? By destroying all that, then you, you can rule the masses better, easier. The thing is that it's the vicious circle, because the ed education, I mean, we are educated by the television and by the, you know, the, 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 all, all the, the, you know, the medias and all that, in order to, to like and to accept that. M most of the things we like today, as we said before, are unnecessary. So, uh, what you don't like, you said, you don't like this, you don't like that, and that's terrible, is that what, what has been promoted for years? I mean, a kid today, 10 or 15 years old, I mean, or even before that, 8 or 5, what they watch on television, this, what they want to become stars. They don't know what that is. And it's a very, very um, immoral. In one hand, of course, what you have two, two, uh, two big factors. The one is the vanity, which comes from, from the artistic side, if you want the artist between brackets. And, and the greed which comes from, from the business side. Now, vanity and, and, and greed, they're so, you know, they, they really like brothers and sisters, like lovers. They, they, they love each other. Put vanity and greed and they, you become really famous. And the vanity is provided by, by the artistic side and the greed is provided by, by, by the business side. And they agree totally. And that's why, I mean, whatever big you, you, you agree or disagree is the reason that happens. And the reason that happens is because people like it. And then you can't fight that. I mean, that's why I'm saying is to go out and say what you're doing is wrong. Even if it's wrong, the moment that they like it, well, what are you going to say? In a democratic way, which I'm great, you know, okay? and democracy is very important, is wrong. I mean, because, I mean, Democracy says this, I mean, you know, and if, you know, the, the people want that, they want this. Maybe they're wrong, you know, but how you can stop this? You can stop it, of course, with education. The only way is education, but the education, again, is, it's, it's somehow uh, gear, geared, it's, it's, it's arranged in order to, to bring those kind of things. Because it's the wrong education, although they pretend it's the right education. But that is a, an enormous issue that we can't go now. I mean, it's not the type of discussion. But the only remedy is education. It's not to stop things and not to permit things and not to ban things and to do to censorship and all that. That's even worse. It's not to have the need to do that. Have to, how, how you can educate people not to smoke? You can't. It's just the people not to have the need to smoke, for instance, without saying smoke is good or bad. Of course we know for the, for the health is bad, and it's ridiculous. <coughs> see people smoking, for example, after maybe 100 years in films, you say, what are they doing? They just they got fire. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's been promoted and promoted and promoted for years because, and of course, it becomes like a drug. And people like it, and of course, it's you know, I like to smoke a cigar after 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 you know, after dinner. That's a different type of thing. Of course, it's not smoking all day. But and I just I made the point about smoking. Just just an example. All the things are like this. And even talking about music, uh, I don't think people they're going to like what I'm going to say, but. From the 60s, the, 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 uh, the sex, drugs and rock and roll situation, I mean, which became, you know, a just turning point, a social turning point, I don't have to say, you know, the results. You can, you can tell me before I tell you what's happening. Or this incredible marketing that started from England. I knew it was our fault. 
No, it's not a question of fault. No, it's, it's, you know, uh, and how, how many mediocre guys, I mean, you know, became famous by selling nothing and give the, you know, the, the, the example to, to, to kids in order, you know, they're old now and they're doing exactly the ridiculous same thing. But I mean, you know, the kids, where they, they have to, to do something, to react. And, you know, they, they <laughs> I don't want to go into details things that I lived because, you know, I spent a long time in, in, in England. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's madness what's happening. In order to impress, to impress, to impress, to influence, to, to impose and to make money. And most of these guys in these groups that don't have money, I mean, some other people have the money. You know that as well. And through that is drugs, it's the, the way of the behavior, everything. And I'm saying, I'm not judging anything, but we complain, everybody does, that things don't go uh, the way that they should go. And I'm asking, I mean, why they don't go? Maybe one, this is one of the reasons that they don't go, because here, there you, you see a kind of, uh, through the music, with this behavior, it's a, it's a kind of education as well. You educate the kids when you go to a concert. You educate the kids when you make a film. You educate when you make a television program. And you semi-educate anymore the, the, the kids when you go to school. The families are already uh, contaminated. <laughs> so you see, we're going through the unpleasant stuff again. And, no, no, no. Uh, no, I don't think, I mean, I know you feel that. And that, and that I, I don't feel this at all because I mean, the world of television has the same uh, problem, uh, which it cannot seem to want to resolve, than mm. when you were talking about music. I mean, mm. the, uh, uh, the arts on television have slowly diminished mm. to the extent that, uh, as it were, personality shows yeah. have increased. So that all television, I mean, the people who run the television, who make money from the ads, all they are interested in is, oh, let's have these meaningless, vacuous, pointless uh, personality exercises so that television no longer occupies the position of helping towards an understanding or helping towards an education that it did certainly when I started. It's now an uphill struggle to get that kind of material onto television because it prefers, as it were, Big Brother. I'm just using Big Brother as an example. So, I mean, it isn't only the music world that, which is, is, is forced... No, it's everything. Yeah. Yeah. But it's another, you know, it's one phrase that I totally disagree because it's so easy to come out. Because when we say things and we complain or criticize, you know, certain things uh, in, on television and music or any kind of, of area, they say, but uh, we give people what they want. And I think it's totally moral and wrong to say that because we... Uh, we push people and we educate people to give them what we want. But it appears that this is what people want, which actually in the end maybe this is what they want, but in order to, to get there, to want this, they didn't get there alone. Somebody worked and pushed in order to, 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 to form a kind of public which can sell rubbish. And this rubbish, it's something which is unhealthy, which doesn't make the, the human being better. Because after all, what is the, the purpose of art? To make people better, not some other, another silly phrase that people say, I, you know, um, represent or I'm, uh, you know, inspired by my, you know, the, the current situation, the problems of things. I mean, what's better to express that the television and the newspapers? Better than any artist in the world. The art is there to give something which is timeless and to make you feel better and to cure all the, you know, the, to clean you like a filter from all the bad things and let the other, other stuff to do, the, you know, the, to be, you know, let's say to, to, to talk about the current things. I'm expressing, you know, my time. So if, you know, you have people killing, then you kill. No, I tell you, 
it's one thing that I will never forget, and I never forget, especially what happened a few days ago, uh, back in England, in London. I had a discussion with some friends, uh, and that was mid seventies. And uh, I think something it was exhibited at the you know the National Gallery, that was totally you know stupid and you know things in order to create uh, impression, to impress people, because this is the point now, to impress, not to, how can I explain, uh, to inspire, but to impress. That's a big difference between inspire someone and to impress someone. So I was really, I was, you know, getting really, you know, upset and tired and angry about all this discussion. Say, listen, guys, I mean, why are you going around and around and around all the time to impress? That's one thing to impress. Let's do it and finish with it. Go to a morgue, take some corpse, throw it in the gallery and don't talk about it. And then that you, you reach maybe the, you know, the, the top of impression, right? Of course, I could have done that. I could have been in prison maybe at the time, and then I could have been very, very famous. Right? Now, unfortunately, you have one of the biggest names in England, which does almost that. And you know the name, I won't never, I, know, I don't say the name. And he, he takes millions of pounds for this. You see, it's easy to be rich like that, but then it's a kind of self-respect. So, I'm talking about 75. And it's exactly the same thing that's happening today, that 2008. And for me, when I said this, it was just like a, a reaction, knowing that there's nothing else you can do. Because I saw a guy, I mean, cutting himself, you know, on stage and walking in a, in a, in a white uh, corridor and with blood. That's art. See what I mean? Or make, you know, uh, another lady which transforms her her face and she's been paid for that in order to be to become a monster and all the kids that you know they have holes everywhere and it reminds me of the Scorpio that you put it in a you know in a round of fire and then it commits suicide you know that with the Scorpio does it's exactly the same thing with society now we are really surrounded by crap and we, we try, you know, to you know, to harm ourselves. So I will never forget this 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 discussion I had. And then, you know, after all this time, I said to myself, if I, I should have done it, then it would have been very rich to me. <laughs> but really, so I mean, it's pathetic. I mean, I think the key phrase there was was uh, self-respect. I mean, uh, it's the sort of denial of self-respect almost, isn't it? to pursue that. Why to impress? Why try to impress? You go to, to art galleries today and you see crap, 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 crap. And that's one thing, because let's say that everybody is allowed, I don't know if it's allowed, but let's say he's allowed to do whatever he likes. The other guy that promotes that, then that's you know, that the difficult thing starts. And, and, and something that you can criticize not the guy that does it, but the, try, the guy that tries to sell it. And the whole, the whole organization around this crap, to sell that, to impose this like, like the new art. And if you, don't, uh, if you don't like that, then you are the stupid one because you are, you are very conservative. You see? And uh, in order not to be conservative, you have to, you know, to, to go to, to this far, which is, doesn't serve anything except an impression and except the guy that was going to put the money in his pocket. Now, you, you could say, I mean, you hinted at it there, or you didn't use the phrase, I mean, you could say that the whole um, ethos of plastic surgery is doing exactly that, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's deforming. Something. But again, you do it to yourself. And this is another thing that uh, that ninety percent of the operations in every hospital all over the world are these type of operations. Suddenly, you know, okay, we know that that women they carry this insecurity of beauty and all that, 
But you know, to that extent, it's incredible. There's been a lot of promotion. There've been films on television. I see serials like that. So that's whatever way we we can make money. Let's make the money. The costs. I mean, the human cost is, doesn't matter. And this is actually the big uh, irony and hypocrisy, because on the other hand, we we say we 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 care about the people. How we care about the people? We don't care about our own children. We give them this this junk every day. How we can care about? It? All these filmmakers, the producers, all these films, they they have children. How they can produce films like that? But they have, of course, the censorship. And then you have really to say yes, but you know I can't keep the, <laughs> cut the hand or I cut the throat and all that. Yeah, but that's hypocritical. The whole system is there, you know, to to, to make you feel dumb completely, and, and you know. To you, you obviously feel very, very. Uh, I don't think angry is the word about it. Yes, uh, yes. You, you, you know, sometimes I feel angry because because of the hypocrisy, and because of, of, uh, with these unnecessary discussions after dinner, sometimes and. People trying to to be clever and to go into the, you know, the the, the center of the problem. All this bullshit, and nobody does nothing because there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. The more we go deeper, it's nothing you can do. So I want to relate that back to um, we you mentioned you brought, you mentioned it yesterday and then you shied away from it slightly. That, as you said, film making films is a kind of collective art. Mm -hmm. No, you didn't use the word art. It's a collective enterprise making mm -hmm. film, um, and it would not be true to say I don't think that a film that works works um, more by luck than judgment. But a film that really works, there's there's one imagination which is driving it forward, and hopefully, in spite of this sort of collectiveness. Mm -hmm gets there in the end, however mm -hmm. inadequately in terms yeah. of their vision. Now, now, just thinking about that as a general idea, I mean, tell me anything that you want, really, about any of the experiences that you've had in, in making films that seems to work against that and the problems that... I mean, you mentioned... In, 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 I mean, I think you can talk about Oliver and... and um, I, t I tell you, I, that's a perfect example. I tell you a, a general impression. You know, I don't dislike working on films, although it's a very, very painful situation. And it's painful because of all these kind of things, because uh, it's, it's not simple. It's, it's also contains all the things around, all the pressures, because everybody is, is under pressure. And uh, the film is a very, very, very difficult business, because first of all, it costs a lot of money. And many things are there on stake. So already the people that are working for a film, they are, they are really in, in, a, in, a, in a great pressure. This is what I feel. And through the whole films, I mean, every film I've done is the same situation, more and less. All the rest, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. If, for example, this director is uh, more sympathetic than the other one, or a little bit more aggressive, or the other uh, softer, or maybe, you know, things like this are not important. What is important is once you enter in that, that area of, of, of being part of, of, of a film, then you enter into a ring and you can, you know, you, you have to, 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 take, to take all these, you know, punches that happens every day. And you have to, to, uh, to, um, to sail around all these pressures and problems, the everyday problems that can can happen uh, from, you know, something, a stupid thing or something that nobody thought or maybe a mistake or something like that. You don't have the time. And this is how I can really characterize the, the, the area of working in a film. Now, of course, each film has its moments, stories, uh, you know, you can laugh, <laughs> you know, but, but uh, it's not an unpleasant situation because you can see something coming out, this is good. But again, um, sometimes too manufactured because people they don't know that 
when they see a film, nothing is real, and everything is real in the end. So you say, good morning, and this tick, tick, tick is in one track, which didn't happen at the same time, and the good morning is not the same time that, you know, is dubbed, and, you know, the, the, the air and the, the mosquito that <laughs> in the room is added, and things like that. So that's, that, that's very nice when it happens and you make it. But it's really, you know, nothing is real. It's, it's nothing wrong that it's nothing is real. But it's, you know, sometimes it's funny. Yeah. I don't. I don't say that. Um, I don't. I, I didn't like. I mean, I don't like working on films, and I have a, a bitter. Not at all. I mean, you know, and I've had a, a really a problem with with any director. Is is an experience, and it's experience in many many ways. Any change from from being alone and working alone. But what else I can say? Then we have to take film by film and go and mention things that. They're not important. Anyway. Well, you might, I mean, you might give one example. I mean, you told me some very interesting stories about uh, Oliver and, and Alexander about the <laughs> problems of going backwards and forwards there. And I thought that was quite interesting. Well, that was Oliver, and we, we had to, to go with it. I mean, you know, because the director is the director, and you know, he's his film, and his head is on stake, and you know, he has to take the decisions. And if he wants to change, you know, the scene twenty thousand times, he's going to change it. And Oliver is, is like this, and uh, you know we had you know a lot of laughter and you know good time and you know I don't dislike him. You know we never had a, a fight. You know things like that. I wasn't asking about your personal relationship. But one and a half years we were going back and forth. You know, <laughs> doing the same thing and the same thing and the same thing all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't asking about I wasn't asking about the personal relationship, but just the, yeah. the actual process. I the, mean, the process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You know. No, it's 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 just, you know, it's easy, you know. Alexander cost, you know, to me a few kilos. My engineer had a heart attack, you know, <laughs> things like that is good. <laughs> And the film was, a, you know, it was not a failure. Um, do you prefer working alone to this sort of collective enterprise, or do you feel you need someone to? Let's say if you put the word, the, the verb working, when I'm making a film, I'm working, and I'm working with other people. When I'm alone, I'm not working. Something happened completely different. Which I can't call I can't call work. It's more natural because you know it can happen any 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 time of the day of the night, or continuously all the time. It's like breathing. Now, if breathing is working, then then I'm working. Yeah. As simple as that. But when I'm making a film, then yes, I can say I'm working. That's a project, and I'm part of this project and do my best. It's interesting that you compare what you do to breathing. It's breathing. It's simple breathing, and, and I say that because I don't know if you remember, I told you that I started so early and I never had anything preconceived in my mind about career, about what I'm going to become, what is going to be my job, things like that. You don't have when you are three or four years old. And that was breathing. So this is exactly the same thing I'm doing. The only thing is today I'm suffocating <laughs> instead of breathing because of all the, the things around. But if you know I'm not uh, disturbed by all this silliness around, I'm breathing, and it's extraordinary because then you know the whole thing. Then sometimes if you say, "Oh yes, I heard this and I enjoy it very much." You know, you you enjoyed it not because it's me that he did. I did it because the way I did it was a healthy way. So it was maybe um, closer, the most natural way, 
And that's very, very important. The natural birth. Something that the baby doesn't suffer. Doesn't get, you know, um, how you call it, uh, mistreated. It's something like that. The most natural something happens, the most, uh, the most uh, natural, uh, you know, natural function can have. And then again here, we have another thing which has been promoted, that artists have to suffer. And, and many, many times artists, special dancers and things, they've been applauded when they suffer. More you, you uh, transpire, perspire, how you call it? Perspire. perspire on stage, more you get the applause. More the artists suffer, more the, the, the work is going to be incredible. You do something in five minutes, doesn't worth anything. The same thing you spend maybe a week to do it or a month, becomes a masterpiece. Because this is, this is how the values have been, they've been uh, promoted to, to society. And I saw it many times. I believe that, uh, because I, I've been through that, that the calmer you are, uh, the less uh, um, disturbed you are, the better you can, you can function. And you can function uh, in a very harmonious way. Is, is this why um, I'm, um, I don't know quite how to put it, but I mean, is this why you turned your back on the success of uh, Aphrodite's Child, for example, because of all the pressures that were building up, or this wasn't? No, the, I, I turned back. The, I, I turned back my my uh, my uh, myself to things like that only for one reason, not because I don't like what I'm doing, because what I'm doing, I know why I'm doing it. When I'm talking, you know, in, inside this uh, record business. It's because I don't like to, the monopoly of things. As I said to you, when you have the fortune and the misfortune to be successful, then it works both ways. And, and for me, it's very, very difficult. I can't, uh, due to, to the success, because the success is not the most important thing for me, to become a prisoner to the success and and be and and uh, being obliged to produce the same thing all the time, and that's why I'm, I'm turning my back to things like that. So I say I have to move to something. I've done it, but I don't want to be obliged to do it. And uh, in this case, I've done it for two and a half years, and and uh, we've been number one, record after record. That's okay. But then you have to move to something else, and you have all the systems says, no, 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 it's not possible. And this is my big question, that when I, st when I decided to leave my country and to, to, uh, to go to England, and then, then at the same time we've been stopped in France for, for the political reasons, you know, May 68. Uh, I always, until today, ask myself if the right decision was to, to start like this. Of course, you know, in, in two months, the first records became, you know, huge, number one, I mean, all, all over Europe. But that was the goal, it was not the, the essence, that was the, if you want, the, the, the mean, the, the, the way to do things. And then, you know, after that, you know, I find myself obliged to deliver the second number one. Big problem there. <laughs> and I did second number one. And then after second number one, I, I was obliged to, to deliver the third number one, which is even more difficult. And I delivered the third number one. Then, you know, it was more difficult to deliver the fourth number one, which I did again. And I say, look, I'm not here to deliver number ones, because that's a different job, and maybe there are other people that are starving for this. I'm not. So, and, yeah, that's it. And nothing against the number ones, of course. It's the way and the, the, the system that push you to do that. You know, I mean, Rain and Tears is a wonderful song. Okay. You might not think so. I, I didn't, but I didn't, I didn't left my country in order to go and, and become a slave to Rain and Tears. 
that was one thing, you know, among many other things, that, you know. Why did you leave? Because uh, at that time, you know, um, I couldn't function in Greece technologically. It was very, very difficult. Uh, and I had to move. I felt that I had to move. I had to move, you know, outside of Greece, which actually, for the moment, London was booming. You know, the the whole uh, technological thing was much, much better. Studios and, and instruments and all that. And uh, I end up in France because you know this. You, you can't calculate those kind of things. So we've been stopped there and we couldn't move. And we started the career from there. And then after that, you know, in uh, 74, I just moved to London, which I built my first studio. And that was my goal, to have my own studio. In order to, in one hand, to collaborate with Reco Comics, and the one hand, in the other hand, to be free to, you know, to function without asking permission and uh, you know, the money in order to go to a studio and record. And of course, at the time, the technology was different. And uh, it's not like today, the technology is much more flexible, those kind of things, in a, in a small size. It gets smaller in size. At the time, technology, you know, you needed a big space in order to, to have multi-tracks and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, from 74 onwards, I just got my own place. And then that was, let's say, 50%. I felt that I could move, you know, as much as I wanted in my own place. And the other 50%, I've been working in order to, you know, <laughs> to support the place and all the technology and to finance the whole thing. Yeah. This was the big always fight. It always is a fight. Yeah. Why don't we have a break? P break. P break. P break. P break. P break. P break. Very, very interesting. I mean, um, yeah, you're not being negative. I mean, you know, I... my eyes are raining, yeah. or you are swimming, or <laughs> so I have. I have to... Do you want to the thought about money? Yeah. That makes the fucking difference, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, no, I appreciate that. That's all. Um, this moment that I've got... Focus on me. You see you do what I mean. He's just checking my Maui. See? Because of the light. Okay. So, we, this we'll, is we'll, we'll, we'll plan a little paint job when we get back to the studio. No, we can... Mm. We fix it in post. We fix it. Well, you can't. It. You can't fix yeah, that. You can. You can, you can fix it. You can do it. No, but I, you know, now you see me. Uh, now that now that we fix the monitor. Look, if you just get, just hold your hand still. Now hold your hand still. Look, you see, that I couldn't see before. Not yeah. We were in that so we have to throw away the other thing. No, no. We can salvage it. Hmm. <laughs> I once did a very long interview with Bing Crosby. And at the end, he got up and he said, he said, well, I, that was really interesting. I enjoyed that. Is any of it salvageable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. Excellent. That's a of a bell. Very good. Stay no. Hmm? no, no, no. I thought I thought it was the moment. Okay, so I'm happy again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Oh. No, no, it's okay. Very silly question, uh, yes. because it is such a grand, it's such a big question. What, 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 a lot of what you say sounds yes. as if you have a, uh, a view of the world which you want to try and persuade others of. Um, not force them, but through education, as you rightly say, to enlighten people. Mm, not really learn, just just a little bit, just stop a little bit and think. That's all. 
thought is a little bit, you know, it's uh, like uh, banned today, like forbidden. They don't, they don't let you time to think. Because, you know, you have to do, go very quickly to do things, or because you have so many problems, you know, no time to think. And we do things because we do things without thinking. Just think a little bit, just stop a little bit, just a touch. That will help. And also, what, you know, I don't, I don't try to say nothing to, to, to anybody, because it's wrong. To teach things is wrong. To, to, uh, to uh, convince people is wrong. What is, uh, maybe the, um, the only thing I can say, the only thing I can say is uh, try to be objective as much as possible. That's all. Because being objective, then you can cure a lot of problems. Just being objective. I don't say be kind or be clever or be whatever. Be objective. I mean, it's not easy, but it will save us. It will save a lot of problems by being the objectivity. Every, everything has been so subjective. You know what I mean? Society is subjective. Everything leads to subjectivity. It's an enormous difference. Enormous difference. So try to be, I'm not saying being, I try to be objective. Uh, you can really, uh, we, everybody, can, can uh, become better. We'll, we can understand a lot of things. We can change a lot of things immediately. Immediately. I don't know if you agree, but uh, I'm not trying to convince anybody. By convincing, you don't do anything. Convincing for other societies and for other things, to try to convince people for things. I'm not to convince anything. Why? I don't have the right to do that. But try to, to say, be objective. I'm, I have the right to do that. To say that. Seven minutes, I thought. Mm. Which question? I've got one more question. Now the monitor is sorted out. What I was going to say before we... Sorry. Before we were so rudely interrupted. Um, I know you won't think of it in these terms, but, but I... What would you say your job was? I think I never had a job. I never felt that I'm doing a job. Although, yes, I mean, you know, I just, as I say, when I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm writing, you know, music for a film, I can consider that as a job. Or maybe, I don't know, what, something else. But in general terms, I never felt that. I never felt I'm a musician, actually. I, I, they call me musician, they call me composer. I don't know what that means. I don't know, I never, I never knew. I know, of course, what that means, but I mean, I never felt it like that. As much as I never felt that I'm a painter. And I don't know why, through the years, I keep exactly the same feeling. Since day one. Because it's natural for me, it's just natural the way that I breathe and I live. And, and um, maybe a job is when you try to do something in order to get some money. Uh, for the reasons, the practical reasons and needs in life, but uh, but uh, you know, for me, uh, music uh, is, it was not something separate or painting. It was just the whole thing like that, and at the same time, I was always, and I am interesting in uh, in. Uh, research in science, in science. 
and always ask myself why this, why that, why that, why that, and I, you know, the the most answers I took them from memory or from nature itself. If you know how to read those kind of things, and if you you have the ability to remember, all the rest are you know external information. Something to happen today for, that happens today more and more. Young people they have every information they need, but um, do they have the knowledge? Information is one thing, knowledge is another. And information doesn't come. Uh, sorry, knowledge doesn't come out of information uh, automatically. Something else has to to, to work there, uh, which is your your brain. So I thought you were going to say, which which is would, would reflect absolutely what you said earlier, that as you said, young people through the internet and other things have all the information at their disposal. More than they need. But no memory. No, of course they don't That's need. The, yeah, because everything is there. I mean, memory works in different ways. To memorize things and to remember things what you've done ten years ago, or maybe to 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 have the memory of maybe twenty thousand books that you wrote. That's one kind of memory. But there's another memory. Is the, the biological memory, which actually contains all the, the codes and the secrets of the universe itself, the, all the, the mechanisms of, of the system, which actually is, is too far away from us now, because we, we, we've been through this hypnosis, through this, uh, how you call it, uh, like a hibernation. We don't work, I mean, every, people say we, we use 10% of our brain. Conditioning. And no more. And the question is, we're using 10% 10, 10 is going to be 20 or it's been 100 and now it's 10 10%. Somebody has to answer that question. He went down to 20%, he's going from 10% up to whatever it's going to be. Maybe the contrary, maybe we, we end up using maybe 1% of the brain now. And the momentum of this, uh, uh, this uh, you know, losing our our ability to, 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 to think properly, it's, it's promoted. It's, it's not uh, the most dangerous thing today, it's that you have this explosion, enormous explo explosion of technology and the enormous you know, uh, momentum of, uh, you know, uh, dumbing down situation. I mean, you have uncivilized people, you have uh, uneducated people more and more in general, but at the same time they have access to the most dangerous technology every day more and more. So what do you have with this? You have something unbelievable. And this is, to me, is enormous, enormous danger. Enormous. I don't want to think what can happen. Because the, instead of those kind of things, you know, to, to get together, they, they go apart. How we can manage humans to, to always to end up like that, I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And again, you know, that's not a very nice thing to say, but we said it. You don't, you don't sound very optimistic about the human condition. I'm optimistic because whatever happens, I, I, you know, I keep doing what I'm doing, irrespective of what I'm saying. But uh, being objective and uh, as as accurate as it can be, I can say no. I mean, things are not very. I don't know if you agree or disagree, but this is what, uh, what my feeling is. But, you know, I don't... Oh, I, I would be yeah. much um, harsher than you. Hmm. I mean, I take... I mean, since you brought the example up uh, of plastic surgery, I mean, that, that, that plastic surgery to me has always seemed the perfect um, example of a decline in any 
any moral guiding principle. If you can simply change the physical appearance of things to what you think is better, and actually frequently, as we know, turns out to be something unspeakably hideous, um, then in the end you're saying that only the and I'm not saying just plastic surgery happens to run into the face, but only the face value of something yeah. has any value. And we know yeah. that's not the case. Yeah. So I mean I find that I find that really pes I mean a really pessimistic view. And if we can do that now with reasonable success, even if occasionally a monster appears at the end, a Frankenstein appears at the end, then it's going to get progressively we're going to go progressively down that as this sort of vacuous idea of personality and vanity, True. as you quite rightly said, becomes more and more crucial. But again... And politicians, for example, yeah. it matters more how they appear on television than yeah. what they're actually seeing. Exactly. And it happens like that, because some people, they vote for, for the president. I don't say which president, because they, it's, it's they like the, the face of the other, they prefer the other one, but the other one had a better look. Well... You see, the thing, the thing is that we, we say this and that and the other and we try to analyze, but it's one maybe another way to, to find out the, the solution is to, um, how you call it, how, when, when you go for, um, to the hospital, in order to, to examine you and to, to have the, how you call this? Um, the analysis. Not the analysis, but the doctor says the, you know, the... Um, oh, diagnosis. Diagnosis, right. That's it's a Greek word. It was a Greek word and I lost it because, you know, and when the diagnosis. Now, the diagnosis, it's so important as much as is the, what I said before, the, to be as much as possible um, objective. Now, the thing that we don't do is the diagnosis. That we we don't do the, the the right diagnosis for for what's happening. And if you don't do the, the 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 right diagnosis, we can't treat the symptom. Because what we do here, we're talking about symptoms all the time. This symptom is not good. This symptom doesn't happen like that. This symptom, you know, it's like this. You know, all symptoms. But the causes, in order to find the cause, you have to diagnose the cause. And there is something that people, either they're not able to go, or maybe they don't dare going. And if you don't go to this, it's nothing that can change. And the change is not against uh, no, no one. The change is only for humanity. It's humanity on stake. It's not one country or another. It's humanity itself on stake. This is how we get, I mean, as far as we get now. And we're not able to realize that. We can't realize. Somehow the human brain can't realize this. And that is something incredible. But we talk about terrible symptoms, 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 symptoms. You say, I can't sleep at night, I have pain here in my head, I can't move my head, I have pain in my back. You know. Okay, why? Let's find the why. Nobody does. I mean, and sometimes on television, late at night, they have some problems. And then, then some uh, semi uh, pseudo intellectuals, they say some totally, you know, <laughs> stupid things. And they go into political things and they try through that to promote certain other stupid ideas. And then, you know, it gets even worse. And then they, they mix up the people that they can listen. But fortunately, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning, nobody listens. So it's okay. <laughs> but, you know, the right diagnosis and as much as it's, it's um, objective you can be, I think that can lead you somehow somewhere that maybe you can start having a hope of something. Otherwise, all the teachings, all the systems and all the things won't help you. Pursuing the Greek uh, connection, I mean music, 
was for the Greeks part of that healing process. Oh, definitely. So I think, I go back to what is your job. It's almost quasi-physician, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's music yes. has something <laughs> really special to give us. That's First of all, my ancestors believe, uh, not believe, said. I mean, they never believed, actually. They knew it was... Uh, ancient Greece was for knowledge, not for belief. Belief started through the Christian years. Everything went through through knowledge, and through the knowledge, said that uh, uh, going to you know to the medical the medical stuff is art. Music is science. Now this sounds odd today. If you if you're going to analyze if you're going to analyze this because that is not the point today, and I can tell you hundred percent that they're right, they're not wrong. It doesn't matter if I'm going to analyze it now or not. Definitely music is science. It's mother of sciences. Now, why all these years never been that? Because it's never been treated like this. Because everything changed. Because don't forget that for centuries we couldn't have access to any of the books of Science, philosophy, mathematics, uh, academies closed everything, burnt everything. People that try to say something, they've been put to fire. You remember that. You remember, of course, we remember all we remember. You know, we've never been lived at that time. But through all those years, it's been a destruction and, and, and they burnt knowledge. And suddenly today, you know, for X reasons, you know, for the last maybe 150 years, this big booming of, of technology and science, of course. But with not the other thing we said before, which is education. And now we're producing a very, very dangerous human being. And then all those kind of things, because we're talking about control before, how you control things, by controlling the senses and all that, that these things are very primitive ways, according, I mean, to, to, to this, uh, you know, um, how you call it, um, um, Somebody's name? No, no. Mm. To, it's a medical thing, the... Not back to diagnosis. No, the engineering, the... Uh, oh, uh, genetic engineering. Genetic, the genetic engineering. All that, they want, they want according, you know, it, it sounds like less science fiction, but it's going to be done in advance. Why you try, I mean, to educate people, or, you know, to, to people who don't have to go to school and things like that, you can prepare all those things before. What people do you want? There are companies that can produce people like this or like that, like that. And then everything is fine. Blade Runner. It's Blade Runner. Although it sounds still science, science, uh, science fiction. But we see it every day more and more and more and more. Right? There's no point for the Olympics. You won't have people to, to jump maybe 10 meters, you know, or maybe, uh, I don't know, to, to run 100 meters in three seconds is possible. We made them. We can make them. Everything is possible to make. Everything is possible to control. Because if the problem is controlling, and if we have new means to control people, why not use them? The thing is that, do we want to control? We, we shouldn't uh, start reacting once we've been controlled. We have to be reacted if we should or we shouldn't control. Once we do it, we are controlled, and it's too late. So within that rather, um, within that scenario, yeah, what is the, the Blade Runner scenario. <laughs> scenario. What, is, what is the function of music? The function of music always has been biological. Is it was being it was the best the best language to reach the soul. And to get, and to, you know, to definitely not to harm people, to make, a better per to make you a better person. And that is the, the music, the, the contact uh, to mu uh, of, of the music to the people. 
and also the function of music for the scientific side is through that to understand the universe the fun the the mechanism of the universe and the laws of the universe because it's exactly the same thing so the universe never harm anybody we harm ourselves we we are destructive the universe changing we we do uh, we cause destruction every day by imposing things by uh, you know interfering all the time it's completely different but this for me, for me music has has these two functions and none of these functions happen today music has always been uh, uh, a vehicle in order to create artists some very some great to create you know to some kind of pleasure of course uh, you know in, in in greek we have two words uh, i don't know if you have them in english they're completely different we say διασκέδαση και ψυχαγωγία the first one means when you you get something and you you know just uh, you feel okay and you laugh and all that you have a good time and the other one has to do with your soul which is much deeper and more serious uh, which doesn't happen today the first one happens really everywhere but the second thing no but i can't find the words in english right now although they might exist in order to you know to to say it you know that it's very hard for me to go into deep waters like this with a few english that I'm, you know i'm using very difficult very difficult because you need really to to you know to um, use the language in a proper way and much more efficient way than I do it and I'm, I'm I'm doing it you're not doing too badly ah you're not doing too badly let's stop then we stop here immediately <laughs> excuse me I mean, it's a fascinating conversation come up from this side of the table I'm happy to talk all night but I don't want to tie you up this is a proof of harmony look at that yeah Now, if it's not harmonious, it will fall. True or not? Yeah. See, look at that. No disturbance is going around. If I disturb it, finish. And this is what we do in every day. See, look. Perfect. And scientifically, of course, you can. Explain what that happens, why that happens. Felix, go right into a big a close-up of the spinning top. As long as I don't disturb it, it will it will turn as much as the first. Uh, do it, do it once. Yeah. Ooh, it's coming this way now. <laughs> You want to do it again? No, just keep, keep it a bit closer to you. Than the Do it again. And the incredible thing is that now you have this friction here. But if there's no friction in space, it will turn forever. Yeah, yeah, of course. Spin it once more. Yeah. Uh, okay. There we go. That's a close enough. Close enough. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah.
Keep it in the middle, Jimmy. In the middle. Keep it in the middle, keep it in the middle. Don't touch it. Leave it until it dies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much again.